We're going to be focusing on performance troubleshooter today, or I'll be probably referring to it as PT. And yeah, I know that there was interest last time in talking about the config change and compliance side of the solution, including CVE policies. And I'm actually anxious to do that session with you guys. In fact, uh, that's something that we've been wanting to do with you guys for a long time. We had an hour today and the ask was to focus on PT. And so we didn't want to shortchange that conversation by ending up with like 15 minutes to talk about that. That probably wouldn't be enough time to cover everything. So, yeah, we're going to be focusing on PT today. So a couple of things to talk about here. We're looking at performance troubleshooter here. You guys actually are entitled to performance troubleshooter as a replacement for the old uh, network performance server or NPS, as you may have known it. There are some capabilities that we're building on top of performance troubleshooter that actually would come as a part of the uh, the NOM upgrade. And so we're going to break this down today and uh, and talk about the different details here. One of the things that we're doing that is unique in the industry is bringing together these worlds of fault and performance and change and compliance, right? Historically, from an industry perspective, those things have been different. You know, we might be monitoring, looking at performance and metrics and whatnot. And, you know, there's changes taking place on the network that are going to affect things like performance. And historically, when we've seen these performance anomalies, we would swivel chair around and go to a third party solution or manually go track down the problem. And so one of the things that we're doing at MicroFocus is, is bringing these two things together. Like one of the things that you're seeing here highlighted is that we have this performance graph, uh, this utilization graph, and we can see that there's some activity on here. And you'll notice that on this timeline, corresponding to the different performance variances we see, we see these red or magenta, whatever you want to call those dots that fall on the timeline that indicate device changes have taken place. Like in this particular case, you can see that you know our, our utilization uh, took a nosedive and, and dipped down here. And <clears throat> corresponding to that is we can see that there was a configuration change that we can actually click on and get a view that basically kind of shows us specifically what happened. And we, we kind of went over this last week. And so we're not going to get, like we said, we're not going to get into this heavily today. We can cover this more, uh, the change side, when we get into talking about automation and change and compliance the next time we meet. But like I said, this is something that is unique to MicroFocus and unique in the industry today. This is an indication of the direction that we're taking the product. Okay, and we're going to see other instances of that today. And if you haven't seen a roadmap recently, I would suggest that that would be beneficial because with our new Vertica backend, which is our high performance column store database, it's going to enable us to do more advanced use cases for things like machine learning and advanced analytics and things like that. So there's 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 cool stuff coming out today and there's cool stuff that is coming out around the corner. And with that, I will go to the next slide here. Getting a little bit more specific here and drilling in. Once again, what are we looking at here? Okay, this is performance troubleshooter and we're going to we're going to get into the UI or, and go through a demo here today. But as far as what we're looking at, so this is actually a specific use case that's been implemented in Performance Troubleshooter or PT that we're calling Unified Incident Workflow. And so on this Performance Troubleshooter canvas, this PT canvas, in this particular case, we're populating with, a, uh, with an incident. Okay, so we can see an incident has occurred and we're going to provide incident details. And, and once again, just to be clear, so this, what I'm showing right now, as a part of PT, this is something that would come as part of the NOM upgrade entitlement. So it's PT underneath, and you've got access to that today, but we're doing some we're doing some new special things with it on top of PT. So we're providing some incident details about whatever incident we happen to be looking at. In this particular case, we can see that we're providing a default metric, which is in line with the direction that we're taking the product. The idea is that we're going, instead of you having to go look for the solution, we're trying to lead you to the solution. And that's kind of what we went over last week. So if, if you guys haven't had a chance to see that demo from last week, I would recommend getting a hold of that, that demo. And, uh, and actually, we'd be happy to, to meet and go over it again if there was a desire. But in this case, we've got an incident. We're putting up a default metric that's contextually relevant. 
And you notice the change indicators here that I just talked about, you know, clicking on that, being able to see exactly what changed. You know, the idea is to come over from a single workspace, be able to troubleshoot and remediate from one place without having to go all over the place. This interface over here on the right, our add metrics interface, we get to come in and select different objects as our targets. In this case, we're looking at interface. So we can select whatever interfaces in the infrastructure that we're interested in. And we're going to see how this UI works here in just a few minutes. There are, are search and filter capabilities that are part of what we've worked with you guys on to implement. And then down below, we, of course, we can select whatever relevant metrics are available for whichever object we've selected above. And there are search and filter capabilities there as well, which we're going to see. Like I said, the idea is that you build out this workspace and we're going to see how we can also uh, export, right? We can schedule this. We can save this off because we know that you guys have requirements to basically build out a workspace of relevant metrics and whatnot that needs to be saved for a period of time until an incident has been verified as being resolved. That's kind of what we're looking at. The idea, like I said, this is PT. When we talk about the incident workflow, that's a specific use case that's been implemented on top of PT. Okay, so I'll stop there for just a second because we're going to move over to the demo. But uh, are there any questions or are there any thoughts to add from our partners at Mike Focus? And if not, I will continue. All right, let me bring up bring up our demo here. All right, a couple things to start off with. NAM actually runs on many of the biggest networks in the world and even out of this world. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? NAM actually monitors the MPLS circuits to the International Space Station that enables the astronauts to do things like send and receive emails, but maybe more importantly to them, when there's downtime, as you can imagine, there's not a whole lot to do on the International Space Station. And so they like to stream. NOM helps the, the astronauts watch Breaking Bad. And uh, so I, that's just a little, a little fun note there. But, but we don't need the biggest network in the world to show some basic networking concepts. OK, so what we're looking at here right now looks similar to what you guys saw last week, a little different. But the idea here is we've got this small topology of, in this case, Juniper routers. Uh, NOM actually supports like over 200 vendors today, uh, of course, including Cisco. Matter of fact, if you were to Google Cisco Works NCM Network Compliance Manager today, you'll see references to the Cisco Works NCM product, which was actually MicroFocus just with uh, Cisco's logo on it. So obviously we support Cisco, we support many other vendors. In this case, we've got this uh, Juniper topology. It's a little ring, it's redundant. Right, we're, we're actually running OSPF to account for high availability when there's routing failures that occur or other failures that occur. So generally speaking, we're passing traffic from the traffic generator on the left through this topology to the out to the world to the traffic receiver on the right. And another note here, we've actually got what is called Juniper real-time performance monitors running throughout the network so that the network is actually monitoring itself and we're utilizing that information, and we'll, we'll see that here in the demo. But, uh, but that's a little bit of a layout of, uh, of what we've got going on here in this topology. Normally, when things are running well, then the traffic is gonna be passed to router one, and router one is then going to take that traffic and send it southbound to router four, and then on out. Okay, when things are good and green, that's what's taking place. Okay, and then conversely, obviously when things are not going well, the traffic is gonna be passed northbound up here to router five and then on out. And that's a less desirable route, maybe it's more expensive, whatever it might be, that's not the route that we're supposed to be taking. All right, so having done all that setup there, we can see that something has just happened. And maybe if we're actually in the NOC actively monitoring the network, we might actually navigate over to the uh, incident, incident management workspace here where we can look at open key incidents, okay? Now, as we talked last week, this process could begin in OpsBridge, right? We didn't do that this week, but we showed last week how we actually could start off into OpsBridge and, uh, and then drill down into NNMI for the in NNMI incidents that were passed up into Operations Bridge. 
But we're looking at some incidents here and we can see that we've got some indicators here, some stuff that's going on. So we see some warning messages about some OSPF routing activity that's going on. But more importantly, uh, we see some critical incidents here uh, that there's like some some real serious problems going on. And we notice that it's router one and we know that that's an important router in our topology, right? Because that's actually our, our, our route out to the world. And we can see this is actually, well, this object is referencing the fact that there's some kind of an issue between router one and router four. OK, and it actually this is the output from one of those real time performance monitor probes that I was referencing. And it's telling us that there's high round trip time between router one and router four, which is interesting given that they are right next to each other. So what uh, you know, what could be going on there? Next, we come down and we see that the, the Giggy 003 interface on router one which we know to be our lifeline to the world is experiencing low output utilization. OK, now that's a problem because we know that that's the main link and that typically should not be experiencing low output utilization. We would expect there to be traffic flowing over that interface. So like I said, if we're actively monitoring the network in the NOC, we could start the process here by drilling down into troubleshooting the problem. But if maybe you're somewhere else in the world, like our friend John M. Jackson, who was on the line, maybe he's on his boat down in the Florida Keys sipping on a margarita. He's, no, he's notified instantly that this problem has taken place. OK, and in this case, he's gotten an email, which if he opens up, he's going to say, "Uh oh, we've got a problem with router one. And I know that's a that's a problem. And he sees what the problem is here. OK, there's low output utilization. And in this case, he could actually say, well, all right, let's go check this thing out and troubleshoot. So we can launch into the performance troubleshooter incident workflow. OK, so like I said, this is performance troubleshooter. This is just a specific instance of it. So we've been given some information about the incident details. OK, this is similar to what we saw last week at this point. And once again, we've got this default metric that we're putting out there for you. And that's something that we'll be adding more of over time, you know, adding intelligence to the product. So like I said, the idea is that we're we're going to put the solution in your face to reduce the mean time to repair. Right. We just talked about mean time to detect as occurring practically instantly. So, yes, this is similar to what we saw where we're seeing the, the performance dip down in this case down to zero. And up above, we see the change indicator that a device change has taken place. Now, we already said that we're not going to focus on this part of the solution today. We, we actually went through this workflow last week, how we could actually view more context uh, of this change. Right. And in this case, we can see this looks pretty suspicious. Right. This probably is where we want to start heading down the path. But we understand that sometimes this is more of an exploratory exercise. And that's what we're going to be showing today. But yeah, there's a whole other side of the solution that I get real excited about talking about. OK, so having said that, we'll put that aside for the moment. Last week, we actually saw an example where we would actually go deploy a change plan to fix a problem. OK, we're not focusing on that this week, but what we are going to do here in this case is we're going to say, well, you know, oftentimes it's helpful to get a, a path view of what's going on. In this case, we don't expect there to be really much going on because as we saw, I mean, these these routers are actually <clears throat> a single hop away. But we click on a trace path and we're going to drop that onto our canvas. And if we scroll down here, OK, we're going to let this build out. And immediately it's like, oh, hold on a second here. What's going on now? We saw in our topology, this is supposed to be one hop away and that's not the case. OK, router one is not uh, routing to router four right now. It's routing. It's taking that secondary path, okay? And we know that that confirms there, there's a problem. That's not supposed to happen. If we come back up to the top here, we're gonna start troubleshooting the problem. We come over to this add metrics interface. And as I showed previously in a slide, you know, we got the select target. In this case, we're looking at an interface. In fact, this was, this was uh, populated by default with the interface that we're talking about here in this case that's experiencing the problem, the, the Giggy 003 on, on the router one that we were looking at. Okay, but maybe we want to look at other, other objects, other targets. We want to pull in other, other things to look at. And we can see in this case, we've got 839. I know you guys have like thousands, tens of thousands, right? And you don't want to be scrolling through that many objects you know, to select from. 
If we come back up here, okay, there's multiple levels of search and filtering going on, okay? So if we click in here, the GIG E002, and in this case, we actually, we know that GIG E0, both router four and router five are connected to our router one by GIG E002 interfaces. So we know that we can filter on GIG E002, and that filters us down to 15 items, which isn't bad, but in a production environment, it's probably gonna be more than that, right? We can actually click on this filter, and we can see that there's a number of attributes that we can filter on here as well. Okay, and so we'll scroll down. We can see you know, interface alias, description, uh, qualified interface name, some, uh, some node uh, attributes. And in this case, we'll go ahead and say, all right, let's click on node name because I'm interested in looking at the Gigi 002 interfaces on router four and router five. Okay, so we click out of our search there and it's going to now filter this down to what we want to see. So we can now easily select our Geek E002 uh, on router five and on, on router four. Okay, so we've selected our objects. Let's put this uh, object selector away. And now we go down to determine what metrics we want to add. Okay, now we'll see in a minute, we could expand down below and like scroll through a list of metrics, but, and you'll kind of see it in the interface here, we can also filter out by typing what we want. So in this case, we actually typed out exactly what we wanted and filtered the list. And so we've got utilization in max for these two objects up above. And I could either click on plus to drop this on the canvas, or I could just drag it onto the canvas and drop it. Okay, but we'll click on the plus here. That's gonna drop a new widget onto the canvas for utilization in for those neighboring interfaces on router four and router five. And what we see is that the, the utilization uh, on GIGI 002 for router four, which is the, the good path where we're supposed to be going, has gone down to zero. And conversely, the traffic has picked up on the neighboring router five interface, right? So that reinforces what we're seeing up above that, you know, that we're no, we're no longer routing directly from router one to router four. At this point, maybe we we realize that okay we're, we're not routing directly anymore we see the path that we're taking we could leave this on the canvas and there's actions that we could take along the path but maybe we feel like you know what i, I know what the path looks like now this is just taking up room on my canvas so let's go ahead and get rid of this tidy up our canvas a little bit so we've got more room to dump you know what are hopefully more meaningful metrics to help us troubleshoot the problem so if we come back over to metrics now, okay, this is where we're going to expand this. And you can see that we've actually got this uh, list that you could scroll through, but better yet is the, the filter and search. So a couple things. One, we're just calling out the fact that we uh, included in our set of metrics is a set of baseline metrics, right? So when, when NNMI is deployed, it's automatically figuring out what's, what's normal, right? What's the baseline of this network? And what's normal at Monday morning at 9 a.m. is probably not what's normal Wednesday at 3 p.m., right? And so we can calculate what's called these baseline sleeves. And if you want, you can be notified when there are baseline violations. And it can also be used to help fine tune your monitoring, right? Because monitoring is not just a, a, a one and done thing. Monitoring is a continual process where we are adding monitors, tweaking monitors, tuning the performance. And so, yeah, that's what baselines are all about. And also along the same lines, you'll notice we've got these metrics for forecast, uh, being able to do trending reports, forecasting, uh, that type of thing. We've got those metrics to support those use cases. Okay, so if we come, we talked about interface targets. Well, let's talk about a different target. Okay, now we're going to see there's a number of different targets. Matter of fact, if we are sharing the data lake with OpsBridge, which we actually happen to be here, uh, you'll see a number of OpsBridge related objects here as well uh, in the same performance troubleshooting workspace. We're going to select node in this case. We're going to come over now and we're going to come down to our object selector, similar to what we saw before for interfaces. I'm filtering on router. I've got a large inventory of devices, and I've just filtered down on the ones in our topology that we're interested in. Just to show similar to the interface, we've also got you know, a number of attributes that can be filtered similar to what we saw a minute ago. 
Okay, so like in this case, maybe I say, okay, you know what? I want to see which of the devices here am I listed as the SNMP contact. And so I come over, I choose the node attribute for node contact and we click out of our search and there you go. So basically I know that router one and router five are both devices that are configured for me uh, as the contact. So apparently my, my job is pretty easy. Um, I just manage two routers here. But I go ahead and I select router one and router five. Okay, can get rid of the object selector. And now we're gonna go down and start picking and choosing which metrics that we want to show. And so in this case, we'll click on ICMP response time, click on the plus, in this case, drop it on the canvas. We'll, drop, we'll drag that a little bigger. And one of the things that we're seeing here, this is the response time from NNMI uh, to the devices. And router one is pretty stable, uh, no real changes there, but we see that the response time for router five has dropped down to very low, which once again would confirm what we're seeing above, which is that you know we're now not having to go route around that topology to get to router five, we're actually going directly to it, okay? So that's one thing. If we come back over here and we go to select a different metric, Okay, we'll go for round trip time. And boom, there you go. We'll drop that widget onto the canvas as well. And let's uh, look at the look at the legend here. We can select this uh, router one, router four. This is this is a this is a, a, a performance graph for one of the Juniper RPM probes that we deployed. And in this, this is where that, that incident was coming from that we saw in the beginning, the router one to router four high round trip time. Uh, basically our probe that's measuring that is letting us know, okay, normally there's a low round trip time between these devices because they're, they're neighboring devices. And in this case, the round trip time shot up because we're no longer routing directly there. So let's come back over to our objects and let's get rid uh, of that device there. So let's come down here and we'll add another metric, okay? And actually, we'll drop that here on the metric, you know, on the canvas. Maybe we want to compare some metrics side by side, right? So we don't always want our metrics in separate widgets. Sometimes we actually want them on the same. So we can actually drag over additional metrics, drop them on this graph. And now we're going to see that we're comparing the uh, set of metrics that we've just dropped on here for this router one device. Okay, and if we come back up to select metrics again, okay, in this case, go to bandwidth, we'll drop that on, and we'll go down below and we'll grab this uh, bandwidth utilization outgoing. So we're grabbing another metric and we're going to drag and drop that on top of this uh, widget here. So uh, we're comparing these metrics side by side on the same graph, which uh, was another ask actually that, that you guys requested, which was a, a good request. So we've seen now that we've been going through selecting objects. We've been selecting metrics for those uh, objects that we selected and we're building out our canvas. Okay, well, there's, there's things that we can do to these widgets that have been dropped onto the canvas. So if you come back over here, look at this widget and edit. One thing we're probably gonna wanna do is change that, that widget name. But in this case, we're gonna see that we can change this line graph to a table. And yeah, we've got the ability to, to do the convert to a line graph, got the ability to change to a bar graph. And if we come back up, we're gonna see that, whoops, let's get rid of this guy. I could scroll back up, edit this widget, and there's additional things we can do as well. So one of the things you guys had requested was the group by capability to actually add additional columns and fields to actually sort and group information. So we added the ability to do these group buys. We can actually uh, aggregate using min, max, average, sum, percentile, you know, whatever that might be, as well as then converting this to a top end or a bottom end. And of course, then the same thing as we saw before, you can change the, the chart type. So now we've built out our canvas. We've gone through here. We've, we've played with metrics. We've dropped some on the canvas. We've gotten rid of some stuff. We've 
built this out to some meaningful workspace for this particular incident that we're troubleshooting. So now we need to save that, right? Because we need we have a we have a requirement to save this data for uh, actually I think it's seven days. You guys said something along those lines, but whatever. We need this workspace to persist. So we're going to come over here, give it a name, click on save. We get a message here that says the page saved successfully, and we can come over and see where it is. And if we click on our operations, we'll drop down. We can see that our workspace has been saved. And actually, if we click on that. It'll repopulate the workspace here, same workspace. We're just overwriting it, okay? But we've saved off the workspace that we built. So now we might need to export this to include as some artifact in a ticket or an email or something. Well, actually we can email, we're gonna see that in just a second, but we can click on export. We'll see that the PDF generation is started and we will be notified, okay? Which we receive the notification here that uh, the export is ready. We click on this down here. We can open up that PDF and actually see a PDF of our workspace, including the incident details and the, the metrics that we built out. OK, scroll down a little bit, take a look at the. Workspace, the PDF, and then if we come back over here, let's get rid of our notifications. OK. And finally, if we come and look here, we can actually schedule these as well. So we can actually come in and pick the file that we want to include. We can select the schedule that we want, one time schedule, repeating schedule, whatever that might be. And then finally, tailor the email to where it needs to go. And in this case, the email is going to be sent to matt.miller at microfocus.com, which would be me. Once again, just to reiterate, so everything that we saw was based on the performance troubleshooter. That included a special workflow that's been added on top of the performance troubleshooter. And that's something that you would get as a part of the NOM premium upgrade, as well as the change indicators. You have access to PT today and all the other capabilities, but those are, those are two things specifically that would be a part of that, uh, the non-premium upgrade. And so, yeah, hopefully, I mean, you get an idea of the direction that we're taking this product, you know, bringing those two worlds together and unifying those workflows between performance and change for like, you know, 360 management of the network, right? Historically, that's something from an industry perspective we've just not had. And MicroFocus is trying to address that. I will end by saying thank you. I look forward to talking to you guys at the water cooler. And that is the end of our demo. Yeah.